What is up, s'mores? Welcome back to my channel. It's Marshmallow Sketches here. I'm Maddie Kenobi personally. And today I am doing my season three video for the Mike Wheeler queer coding compilations that I've been making. I'm going to explain some of the things I talk about just a little bit less because I explained them better in the first two videos. Also, if, I, if my wall looks bland, I'm very sorry. I'm working on a new setup for my background because like I had an idea and I decided to pursue it. And so I'm working on something, but I took some of the stuff down and I was going to do my whole wall before I started filming. But then I got distracted and then I just decided to film and then I'll work on my background later. So there's going to be like a new setup probably the next time I have another video. So yeah. Also, I haven't been here in like a month, so I will explain just a little bit. I'm okay, I just took a little bit of a mental health break and then a lot of stuff happened and then I had a ton of schoolwork to catch up on and then Thanksgiving, my birthday rolled around and then I got sick, I'm fine. But like a bunch of stuff happened all in a month and so I just didn't have time to film. But I do now and I am very happy to be back because I love doing this and I'm super excited today. Um, quick little opinionated disclaimer, everything I'm about to say is completely opinionated and based on my personal perspective of the show Stranger Things. Also, please remember, I'm a multi-shipper, so I ship a lot of characters with a lot of people. This is just one of the many, many Stranger Things ships that I like, so just keep that in mind. Thank you all so much for the support, and I've been ranting for too long, so I'm just going to get to the actual video. We're going to start with Season 3, Episode 1. <laughs> um, at 6.20, the lyrics, Because just a little more time could open closing doors, and just a little uncertainty can bring you down, play over an establishing shot of Elle's room before panning to Mike and Elle kissing. I think these lyrics, like the hero scene from season one, could matter to the overall story. Because just a little more time could open closing doors feels important seeing as a huge conflict this season is that Mike and Will's friendship is fading, and even beyond that, there's a lot of conflicts this season, in general. Just a little uncertainty can bring you down. There are a lot of internal conflicts that in this show, but in regards to Mike and Will, they have a lot of them this season. I'd argue that the entire party, Dustin, Lucas, Max, Mike, Will, and Elle, also have a ton of external, com internal and external conflicts with other characters this season. But seeing as Mike kind of serves as a main character in the first three seasons, it makes sense that he appears to have the most internal conflicts. In season three, Mike has multiple. He struggles with Hopper wanting to see Elle and being afraid of what Hop will do to him. He struggles to understand his fault in what happens between him and Elle. He has a hard time with his jealousy of Max again, and he drifts away from his best friend Will, who is really hurting this season. I think these lyrics really speak to Mike's storyline this season, which makes sense when you realize that he chose the song. He chose this song because he wanted to get Ellen to his music. I feel like the colors this season are super important, especially for Max, Elle, Mike, and even Hopper. And in some situations, I think that it's also important for Lucas too. So I feel like these these characters who are all involved in a very similar, like the same storyline, I feel like they're, the colors that they wear are very important. Everything about Mike and Elle's interaction at 803 feels a little off to me. Um, and it honestly took me by surprise while doing my rewatch of this video. Elle on the walkie as, as Mike is biking to the mall. She says, I wish I was still with you. And it cuts to Mike biking home as he replies, I know, me too, but I'll see you tomorrow, all right? First thing. And I don't know, I've always struggled with social cues, but he sounds so like push offy, if that makes sense. And in my opinion, as a neurodivergent person who oftentimes masks, especially in social situations, it just, it, to, in my perspective, it just looks like he's kind of shut himself off and he's kind of just like, like emotionally disconnected. And so that's just in my personal perspective with who I am. That's how I interpret the scene. Um, if you are neurotypical or if you're also neurodivergent and you see this in a different way, I would love to hear how you see it because I see the scene in a certain way and I connect to it on a deep personal level because of that. And also because I, I personally had Ken and Mike as having ADHD. But that might just be like a self-projection thing. <laughs> I haven't really seen anybody else say that, so it might just be me, but I personally think he does. And so that's how I see it. So I would love to hear your thoughts on this scene. But personally, to me, it looks like a person masking and kind of like taking the mask off and like kind of emotionally disconnecting himself from the scenario because he's done with the social interaction. But that's just how I see it. At 8.25, Mike goes to the mall slash movies with Will, Max, and Lucas. Lucas says, again, annoyed that Mike is late again. At 9.22, Steve says, again, seriously, this heavily implies that they've done this a lot, possibly all summer. And then 
later on, Will takes out his backpack and Mike immediately goes to grab the snacks from the backpack and the two of them take their snacks out and start eating them, insinuating that they discussed this beforehand and decided that Will would bring the snacks. And so it just seems like this is a routine thing that the four of them do a lot this summer. But on an analytical note, Mike immediately going on this double date could be interpreted as evidence for the theory that Mike dates Elle as, an, as like a way to appear straight. Um, this could further be argued by his lack of communication with her, lack of emotional connection, over-the-top PDA, and consistently distancing them from friends and group settings. But this is just a theory that I've read on Tumblr and Twitter, and like, I can definitely see that being a possibility, him dating her because he wants to appear straight, and this double date kind of proving that he is, like, like, I don't know, distancing these two separate, like, he's living a double life almost. I don't know, that just... That's what it could be, but then again, it might not. Just depends, I guess, on how you view the show. But yeah, and also the list I just read off of the things that I've noticed. Um, I read it off of Google because I was looking up like signs that a person is dating someone only to appear straight, and those are the signs that I saw. Lack of communication, lack of like emotional connection, over the top PDA and distancing yourself from group settings. Those, that's like a list that I read. I wanna take a moment to point out everyone's outfits this scene. Mike is wearing yellow and blue, Max has red, yellow, blue stripes on a red shirt, Will is wearing blue and red, and Elle wears blue in the beginning of this episode and yellow with plaid later on. As I pointed out before, Stranger Things is known for having phenomenal and detailed costuming and the colors they wear could be very important to the characters and their storylines. Max, Will, Mike, Lucas, and Elle are all involved in Mike and Elle's conflicts and storyline this season. Lucas wears a lot of red this season. This, for example, could be because he is kind of like team getting Mike and Elle back together, whereas Max is more team helping Elle find herself. Like, Lucas's motivation in helping Mike work through their breakup is because, I, I think, is mostly just him trying to help him, like, win Elle back in a way. And with Max and Elle, I feel like Max's goal is to help Elle kind of find herself which I love that storyline so much. I love the journey of Elle kind of finding herself, even in something as simple as finding what kind of clothes she likes to wear. I really, really love that for her. And like every time I watch that scene, I cry a little bit because it's like, I love Elle so, so much. And just seeing her having fun at a mall with a friend and just like enjoying life just makes me so happy because she has been through way more than any person ever should. And so just seeing her have fun with her friend at a mall literally just makes me cry it's just such a sweet thing and i just love that scene so much but moving on because i don't want to go on like a million rants because if i start talking about hell i'll never stop so i want to point out that max and lucas sit rows and like literally like two rows and all the way to like on opposite sides of the theater from mike and will which i think is interesting because they're going as a group but they're just like separated which just feel it just feels kind of intentional i don't know um, and at 12.49 is when Will and Mike have their famous theater scene. A lot of people talk about the scene, and even I will admit that the scene has a very interesting kind of tension. And the temp tension and chemistry in this particular scene is so interesting to me. Like, I guarantee if you added soft romantic music, it would genuinely read like a romantic scene to the general audience. Hey. Are you okay? Yeah. Are you sure? Okay. At 1349, Will comments on how Jonathan and Nancy being cute and romantic is gross. Joy says, you're not going to think it's gross when you fall in love. And Will responds, I'm not going to fall in love. And seeing as we know this is false information, this confirms that sometimes characters lie or can be in denial, meaning that the theory that Mike doesn't love Elle romantically is a possibility. I don't know. That could be a stretch. And I do admit that. No, no, I mean, we're just friends. We're friends. <laughs> <laughs> You've told me a lot of shockers today, but that, that is the first lie. It's not a lie. At 29.05, Dustin talks about the Romeo, Juliet, Shakespeare, and Starcrest lovers, and Mike announces he's leaving with Elle. Malevin is consistently compared to Romeo and Juliet, whom some could argue aren't actually in love at all and they just think they are. But yeah, Romeo and Juliet is such a complicated thing. I feel like there's a lot of, I feel like there could be a lot of perspectives on how that play is interpreted. 
I just don't think Romeo and Juliet are actually in love because I don't think you can I don't personally I'm of the opinion that I don't think you can love someone you just met I just can't understand the concept of loving someone that you don't know for a very long time that you don't have a deep personal emotional connection with so maybe that's why I feel that way but I just I don't I don't see it I don't get the whole love at first sight thing it doesn't make sense to me I just find it interesting that Romeo and Juliet, a tragic love story that ends with them both dying, is compared to Elle and Mike so much, which really scares me. Because if Elle or Mike dies in season five, I'm, I'm not going to make it. Because Millie Bobby Brown keeps talking about how she wants Elle to die, and I'm like, please don't do it. Because if, if Elle dies, I'll probably cry for like months. I will never not, I will never be the same person again. At 2927, the group comments on Mike leaving with Elle. Max says, it's romantic. Will says, it's gross. And Dustin says, it's BS. While yes, Max is coming from a place of possibly wishing her and Lucas were like that, or she's just happy Mike and Elle are happy, Will is jealous and Dustin is upset his friends ran off while he just got home. These three are still commenting on Malevin's recent behavior, which is them running off all the time. And the term BS is, con is commonly used to describe love that isn't real or love that I is interpreted the wrong way. Like a lot of people have compared Stancy, which is Steve and Nancy, to Mike and Al, which I do understand why there are a couple of parallels that I've noticed. But um, this is one of the parallels that I definitely think could be interpreted that way because Steve and Nancy, it, you, we all remember the infamous scene where Nancy tells Steve that she doesn't love him and that it's BS. And it's basically the point is that the term BS is used to describe love that isn't real or isn't what we thought it was in this show. And so the concept that Dustin says that there says that it's bs that they're just walking away and distancing themselves from the group while again his perspective is that he's upset that his friends are leaving when he just got home which poor dustin i feel really bad for him this season but the point is is that even with that perspective he still says what he said and if you take it at surface level yes he is just upset that his friends are walking away when he just got home but if you look at the subtext of the fact that BS is used to describe love that doesn't feel real or isn't like real or is misinterpreted in some way, you could use it as evidence to prove that Steve and Nancy and Mike and Elle's relationships are being mirrored or like compared to. And Nancy and Mike, who are siblings, have a lot of scenes that kind of compare both of their storylines and compare their trauma and the love that they're experiencing. And I've talked about this before, but they have a lot of parallels and so it's very possible that this is a parallel like those other scenes are. 3724, can't fight this feeling is playing and both Elle and Mike are wearing blue. At 3833, the lyric, my life has been such a whirlwind since I saw you plays when Hopper walks in, further proving that the lyrics in association with the scenes that are being showed is important, like I discussed in the last video and like I discussed a few minutes ago. I just feel like there are many, many, many moments where the lyrics that are playing are important to the characters in that scene and the context of that scene in general. And so it just feels very specific what lyrics and what songs are playing at certain moments. And so I think it's important to think about when we watch the, the show. Season three, episode two. At 351, Mike wears a yellow shirt with faded red and blue stripes. At 457, Mike is lying to Elle over the phone. At 503, Mike says, friends don't lie. This line feels so out of place for me. Like, I love the dialogue in the show. I think it's really well, well written. But this moment right here feels very weird to me. I feel like this line is either said for fan service or it's said because Mike doesn't see Elle in a romantic way. Like, I don't understand why he would say friends don't lie. Because A, he's supposed to be her boyfriend. And so I'm surprised that he didn't say I wouldn't lie to you or boyfriends don't lie. It really shocks me that he didn't say that. And like the line itself doesn't sound like an organic response to do you lie or even did you lie? You know what I mean? Like it doesn't sound like an organic response. I also beg the question, why does he need to lie? But like his lying feels out of place to me because he's expressed on numerous occasions that he doesn't like lying and that lying is not good and you shouldn't lie to your friends. And so it just, it just surprises me that he lies in this scenario because I've been thinking about it nonstop and it's like, why did he lie? Like, what's the reason? Like, why not just tell her that Hopper doesn't want, doesn't want them to hang out today or maybe just say, oh, I don't really want to hang out today. I don't want to talk about it. Like, I don't understand why he felt the need to lie. Like, I don't know. It just, in this scenario, it doesn't seem to make much sense to me. But then again, if you have another perspective on that, please explain it to me because I'm, I'm super confused. But anyways, um, my notes here got a little messy, but while talking to Mike and Elle after 13 minutes, Lucas is wearing blue and Max is wearing red. 
Um, I think this is kind of showcasing like whose side they're on <laughs> a little bit because I have talked about how I think that red could be either Elle's color or Mike and Elle's color. So yeah. At 2602, Elle asks, how do I know what I like? And Max responds, you just try things on until you find something that feels like you. A huge theme in this season is discovering yourself, which I think is a really powerful message and I do love this scene. At 3714 is the iconic I dump your ass scene. And I have a few things I want to point out. First of all, Mike seems annoyed. Lucas seems kind of shocked and Will just kind of looks down like he's in deep thought about what just happened. This breakup is played to be very, very comedic, which feels kind of strange for a show that's so serious in tone. I kind of hate the comedic route that they took with their breakup slash fight in season versus their breakup in season four because like their season four breakup genuinely hit me. But this just makes me laugh and this feels kind of out of place for the show, but that's just me. And it's just funny to me that a, that a show that's so serious about its characters and its plots, even, even a show that cracks jokes sometimes, it's still very serious and dark in tone. And so this season itself feels out of place, but this scene in particular feels so out of place for this show because it just feels thematically and contextually just out of place in general. Season 3, episode 3. At 133, Mike is spiraling. He cannot grasp how he did anything to deserve this. And while it is a funny scene, its context has always been a little confusing to me. Contrary to popular belief, Mike is emotionally aware with the people he cares about. Sure, he gets confused with Lucas's jealousy in season one, but he matures from that. In season two, he's very there for Will and even Joyce. He's been growing up a lot, and it just seems strange to me that he's reacting the way he is. And it just feels kind of out of place for him to be this confused about what he did wrong when he knows he lied. He knows he lied and he talks about how he knows she knows he's lying. And so it's just so interesting to me that he's spiraling this much and he's this confused about what he did wrong. What did I do wrong, Lucas? Just tell me what did I do wrong? Like, buddy, <laughs> you lied to your girlfriend about why you didn't want to see her. You lied about your you, you lied about your nana being super sick. And then the next day you lie to her at the mall about why you're at the mall and like you wonder what you did wrong it just makes no sense to me that a person who's this emotionally connected with people is this confused about what he did wrong in this scenario especially when he's well aware and later on he kind of comes to terms with what he did wrong and he apologizes for it but like how did it take him that long for it to click in his head what he did and it's even stranger that lucas is like feeding into it and telling him that he did nothing wrong and that he's totally not in the wrong here lucas is so funny this season but like it's just so strange to me it's like how are you this confused about what you did wrong when it's crystal clear that you lied like that's what you did wrong you lied to her <laughs> it's just so confusing to me that he's this confused and he's so emotionally mature with people like even in seasons one two and even in season four, he's just, he's emotionally mature and I feel like he's very aware and I just, I don't know, it's just so strange to me. His, his, his emotional maturity feels like the most inconsistent part of his character, but I feel like I could make a whole separate video on just that in itself because it's very confusing. At 210, Lucas and Mike talk about the girls and they say emotion not logic and that the girls are a different species. Species is used in a few times in regards to gender and love and other things and... It's just interesting to me that it's used a couple times. Um, Dustin uses the term species in, in a scene that could be contextually interpreted as a scene about Mike and Will, um, the Indy Rana Savi Palmata scene that I talked about in the last video. And Lucas comes up to Erica, who's playing with two of his dolls, and he says, they're not in love. They're not even from the same planet. They're not even the same species. He says something along those lines. And so it's just interesting to me that the term species is used a few times. And even Elle uses it later on by saying, and if I'm spending too much time with you and I'm a different species than you, then maybe I should be with my species more. <laughs> I love her in that scene. She really, t she really showed him. Like, that was so funny. Anyway, sorry. At 2042, Mike is annoyed and focused on the girls when Will gets upset and his entire demeanor just shifts. Like, he, Mike is annoyed and focused on the girls, but then when Will gets upset, his entire demeanor shifts. He becomes immediately surprised, upset, and apologetic, and empathetic, and this scene hits harder after his general lack of emotion connection this season, because he's been kind of ignoring Will, because he's been so focused on Elle, for obvious reason, because they're, like, going through this breakup, and he's super focused on this, but, like, Will, and then the way he, like, looks so shocked and hurt when Will yell yells, it, like, genuinely makes me sad, and I saw this TikTok the other day, where that scene played and then it showed scenes of Will screaming in season two and a bunch of the comments were like uh, like interpreting his reaction as like 
like remembering will in season two and if that's true like that's gonna make me cry like i i really hope that that's not true like it's a great theory but i don't want it to be true simply because that is just so sad but anyways but yeah mike immediately apologizes and says that they can play and at 2046 will he says will i was just messing around and at 12 at 2049 mike immediately apologizes and says that they can play and finish the campaign and he encourages lucas to join in lucas is still hesitant hesitant to play um and mike has been saying no presumably all summer and now now he's showing how like like it's important to will and he, and he can see that it is important to will and so he's desperate to fix it at 2058 mike is genuinely shocked when will yells like i said before he looks really hurt to see that he's in pain and at 2105, Mike rushes after Will at the stairs, and Lucas stays downstairs. At 2115, Mike apologizes again, and Will says his speech. I know it by heart. Like, this scene is so iconic, and it's, like, so sad at the same time. And it's, like, all the things he says, and he's, like, oh, it's a cool campaign. It's really cool. We're just, we're just not in the mood right now. Yeah, Mike, that's the problem. You guys are never in the mood anymore. You're ruining our party. That's not true. Really? Where's Dustin right now? See, you don't know, and you don't even care, and obviously he doesn't either, and I don't blame him. You're destroying everything, and for what? So you can swap suit with some stupid girl? Elle's not stupid. It's not my fault you don't like girls. This scene genuinely, like, like, it makes me emotional just thinking about it, but, like, this scene is so sad, and seeing Will's face just drop, because he just, like, it really hits him what Mike just said to him. Because, yeah, Mike, it is your fault he doesn't like girls. It is your fault, buddy. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not funny, but it's, like, it's so sad. <laughs> Using the term stupid, the term stupid is used to describe love in this show, and even in the next scene when Will breaks down, breaking down Castle Byers, he keeps saying that he's stupid, and it's kind of insinuated that he feels stupid for loving Mike. He thinks that he's stupid for feeling the way he does, and so just saying Elle's not stupid, it could be interpreted a certain way. I'm like so, like, just thinking about the scene, it makes my, it makes my soul hurt, but at 2203, Mike looks so guilty after, and like, so guilty and sad after after will says i guess i did i really did like it just it's so so sad and at 22 11 after the fight mike drags lucas all the way across town at night in the pouring rain to continue apologizing and i just i think that this is so interesting to me because this man got on his bike and rode all the way across town because their houses are on the opposite side of town i can show you a map they're on the opposite side of town. So he he biked all that way in the pouring rain in the middle of the night just to go and apologize to Will again. And that, like, r romantically or platonically, that is really, like, that's really powerful that he did that. Like, if it's, if it's in a platonic way, he is such a great friend. And it's so beautiful that he was willing to bike all the way across town to continue apologizing because he genuinely realized that he messed up and he felt bad about it. And if you interpret it romantically, it is very sweet that he loves him enough to go all the way to his house in the pouring rain like really late at night just to apologize like no matter how you see it no matter how you interpret their relationship this scene is so beautiful because it really shows you how much he cares about him in whatever capacity you think he cares about him in like you can tell that he genuinely does love him no matter how you think he loves him you can tell that he cares about him and that like that that genuinely makes me happy just seeing that he was a that he drove all he biked all the way across town just to apologize to his best friend like it's really sweet and I want to point out that this all happens in season three, episode three. I point this out because a lot of people have noticed that in season one, episode one, season two, episode two, three, three, and four, four, big Byler moments happen. And I, I also think that this is a very interesting thing to notice because in season one, episode one, it was a disappearing of Will Byers, which was obviously a huge deal. And Mike becomes determined to find him. And in season two, episode two is the crazy together scene. Three, three is the rain fight. And then four, four is the scene in the bedroom where they're talking and everyone's been talking about it because obviously I cannot wait to talk about that scene in the next video. At 3515, Mike is wearing a green jacket and Lucas's is dark blue with green on the inside. Mike says his line and he talks about, he basically just says, look, man, I'm sorry. All right. I was being a total a-hole. Can you just come outside and we'll talk? He's like, he's very sorry and he keeps apologizing. And at 36 minutes, Will has his breakdown, calling himself stupid for wanting a future with Mike. Also, I'm pretty sure he says the F word while destroying Castle Byers, which would mean that this is the, the second time that the F word is used in the entire show, once by Billy when he's trying to get out of, um, out of like the sauna. And he says the F word, so this would be the only other time that it happens, in, to my knowledge, of course, because it could have been said again, but... 
that's what everyone else is saying. I, I also kind of hear it when I listen to it, but then again, that might just be because I'm looking to hear it. It's kind of like the Laurel Yanny thing, you know what I mean? Like if you read something, you're gonna, you're gonna hear it. So yeah, I don't know. And I also want to point out, of course, that this scene feels like it's kind of a parallel to Mike destroying his fort in season one, like I talked about before. I kind of discussed that a little bit in the season one video. But yeah, it feels like kind of a parallel between the two. And this scene is so heartbreaking, seeing him break down in the pouring rain. And then we just kind of move on from it. So it was like that very emotional moment. And then we just kind of move on to the next thing. And it was like, goodness, it, it made me cry. Like when I was watching, I had to pause and like take a minute because I was crying so hard just watching him destroy his castle buyers and just break down in the pouring rain and calling himself stupid and like ripping papers apart and like just, uh, just so sad. Like I... It was just a really beautiful scene and Noah Schnapp really deserves all the recognition that he gets because it's a, it, he did a phenomenal job in that scene. It was so good. Season 3, episode 4. At 828, Mike wears blue this episode. Will is in red and yellow. At 827, I admit this is probably nothing, but Max has a rainbow, has rainbow sheets and a pride color, like a pride themed kind of shirt at 1255 throughout the episode. And seeing as she plays a role in the Byler L. Max Malevin portion of the, and I say all of those ship names with the context of like platonic and romantic, of course, portion of this season's storyline, it's interesting that she wears this right after the rain fight. That's another thing. This is right after the rain scene. This is the very next scene in the next episode. And I just find it interesting that her shirt, like when I looked at it, I was like, is that, I was like, is that a pride shirt? I looked at it and I was like, there's no way it's not. Like, that's so particular. I'll show you, I'll show you like a screenshot because I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it like reminded me of a pride shirt. It just seems, it seems so particular since it's right after the ring fight and Max is kind of like involved in those storylines. At 3332, Mike explains why he lied, but doesn't explain or like think that he's at fault. So he doesn't apologize yet. But even though it could be argued that he didn't do much wrong in the situation with Will, he was able to apologize to Will right after the big fight, but not with Elle, which I just think is so interesting. Like, he lied to Elle, and he knows that lying isn't good. He knows that he, do he, knows that it he doesn't like to lie because you, you don't lie to your friends. But then after lying to her, he... There's no way he doesn't know that he was in the wrong. And it's like so strange to me. And he doesn't apologize yet. It takes him like multiple episodes to apologize. I'm pretty sure he doesn't apologize until the bite. But I might be wrong. I think it might, I think he apologized in the bite. But then right after Will and him had that huge blow up, he immediately like biked all the way across town in the pouring rain just to apologize. And that that to me feels kind of telling. It's like, it's so strange to me that he was a, he was able to apologize that quickly. And we know it's hard for him to apologize and take responsibility for things. Like even in season one, he was, he had a very hard time taking responsibility for the Lucas thing. And he's always had a hard time like taking responsibility for his actions. And so the fact that he did that immediately with Will and immediately apologized, but then with Lucas and Elle, he had such a hard time apologizing and it took him a long time to get there. It's just so strange to me. Season three, episode six. 2233, Mike is wearing green, yellow, and blue. Max is wearing light blue and purple, and Lucas is wearing red. I want to argue, I do think that Elle's color might be purple. I think it could be. Like, I hope it's purple, because purple really suits Millie. Like, I've seen her in purple, and she looks so gorgeous, and so I feel like purple should be Elle's color. But that's just me. If you disagree, please tell me, but like, I think that, I definitely think that Elle's color should be purple. So yeah, and that's a thing that I do want to talk about for a second. It's, it's the fact that Mike's color appears to be blue, obviously, Blue and purple don't make red, but blue and yellow do make green. So it's like, it's interesting that Mike and Will's colors match the color that everyone associates with their relationship, but then Mike and Elle's supposed colors do not match the color that they're associated with. But that's just an observation that I make, and I could be wrong. At 2346 is Mike's confession. Here's the general reaction. Nancy and Max are both shocked. Jonathan is kind of uncomfortable slash he looks kind of angry for obvious reason because I, I am of the opinion that he knew that Will, Will was in love with Mike or at least that Will was gay. And so that's that's what it seems like. Lucas smiles very proudly. He's, he has like the most smug smile. He like looks down and he's like so proud of him. He's like a proud bestie. That's it. His reaction always makes me laugh. Sorry. And Will looks down and like he's sad. This is the last time he says it until the piggyback, which is over a year later. I actually did the math and I think it's about, it's at least 264 days. And I think that's interesting that he says it this once and is unable to say it for another 264 days and that it took her almost dying for him to say it. Like, it's just very surprising to me. 
and it really makes me feel for Elle. It really does. Throughout this episode, Mike's green shirt gets darker and darker as if part of him, as if the part of him that loves Will was being like almost drained from him. And that could be a huge stretch, but like it, I could be reading into it way too much, but I just wanted to point it out that his shirt gets progressively darker and darker. Season three, episode seven, 2649, all couples, or at least the supposed end game, end game ones, sit in pairs. Jancy, Lumax, Byler, and Elle. It's very similar to the final positions in season four, besides Lou, Lou Max, because they're because obviously Max is in the hospital, but that made me sad just thinking about that. I'm sorry. But anyways, the point is that it appears like the endgame couples are all sitting in separate pairs in this scene, and I just think it's interesting. 3223, the song that plays when Robin comes out to Steve is the same song that plays when Elle tells Mike that she loves him and they kiss in season three, episode eight, one hour, four minutes and 58 seconds. Season three, episode eight. At an hour and 22 seconds, Mike and Will have their what if you want to join another party, not possible scene. At one hour, four minutes and 11 seconds, Mike acts completely oblivious to what Elle is talking about. At one hour, four minutes and 58 seconds, the first I love you plays and they kiss. The first I love you is the song that plays when Robin comes out to Steve. I think it's really interesting that the exact same song plays when Robin comes out to Steve as a lesbian and when Elle tells Mike that she loves him and then they kiss. It's really interesting to me that the exact same song plays in both scenes and it's called The First I Love You because in Steve and Robin's situation, it's Steve realizing that the person that he thought he had a crush on or the th person he thought he cared about or like loved in that way is gay and doesn't love him in that way but loves him in, in their own special way because she loves him like a best friend. Like they're platonic with a capital B. I, I love them so much. I feel like they're platonic soulmates at their finest. And then you compare that to a scene where... Elle is telling Mike that she loves him. It's just interesting that those two scenes have the exact same song playing because like, why? What do those scenes have in common? You know what I mean? Like that gets you thinking. And so that's why because of this evidence, I am starting to think, well, maybe this is Elle. I don't know. Like, I just, I, it just really gets you thinking like, why? Why are those two scenes being kind of paralleled with each other? Because why else would you play the exact same song twice? You know what I mean? And they kiss. Mike is positioned so he's right in front of the slash like he looks like visually he looks like he's inside of the closet and like there's a line where the closet ends and the wall begins and like that exact line is split right down the middle between Mike and Al. So Mike is completely inside of the little square where the closet is and then Al is on the other side positioned in front of the wall and I just think that's so interesting because this is another time where closet imagery is used with Mike. And this happens, I think this happens a few times in season two. I think I talked about it, but I just think it's interesting. And when they kiss, his eyes are open the whole time. And when Elle walks away, he looks like conflicted. He looks kind of confused and almost like, like I said, conflicted. And he just, and at one, and at one hour, five minutes and four seconds, he looks down into the side and this this happening right after the not possible scene leads me to believe that it's a parallel and it's just interesting because it's like his reaction to being told that his best friend isn't going to join another party versus his girlfriend telling him that she loves him back it's just such an interesting difference because it's like why do you look so conflicted like you just found out that your girlfriend loves you too and you've been so conflicted about it like why aren't you happy i don't i just don't like some people could interpret it as shock which is fair but it's just interesting that that plays right after the first I love you plays which is which is a song used when when Robin comes out to Steve so it's just very interesting to me at one hour seven minutes and 14 seconds Byler hugs goodbye on the line the truth is for so long I forgot what those even were in reference to Hopper talking about feelings at one hour seven minutes and 50 seconds Hopper says but lately I guess I've been feeling and then it zooms in on Mike distant from you like you're pulling away from me or something Will says that he's been pulling away in season four because he's scared of losing Mike. This scene insinuates that Mike feels similar or the same. At one hour, eight minutes and 20 seconds, Hopper says, changing, and it cuts to Mike. And I guess if I'm being on really honest, he looks back at the buyer's house. He's the last to leave. That's what scares me. I don't want things to change. And on the word change, it cuts to Will. Like, I just... Am I crazy? Am I like that's so specific. It's like it keeps cutting to Mike uh, during these during these portions of the letter where it feels very like it could it could be, very well be about Mike. And then on the word change where he's like 
I don't want things to change. It cuts to Will. Like, it just feels so specific, a lot like the hero scene in season one, and it's just so interesting to me. One hour, eight minutes, and 38 seconds cuts to Mike in his house. And Hopper says, so I think maybe that's why I came in here, to try and maybe stop that change. And he hugs his mom on to turn back the clock, to make things go back to how they were. This feels like a direct season one parallel to the hero scene and then the scene where Mike and his mom hug. This entire sequence feels so familiar to me because again, it's cutting back and forth between characters and the parts where it's cutting to Mike feel so specific to his character and Mike and Will's dynamic. And it's like, it's so particular that there's no way it's not intentional. At least that's how I see it. At one hour, 10 minutes and 10 seconds, the song Heroes plays, but it's different than in season one. And it feels like it's for Jopper and Elle this time, meaning that the lyrics in season one were probably intentional because in this scene, the lyrics are not the same as they were in season one. And this time it feels like it's intentional for a different person. And I just think it's interesting, just the fact that, that, that it's different because that could, that, that could potentially prove that in season one, those lyrics playing at those specific points like I talked about could possibly be on purpose. So yeah, those were my thoughts on all of the possible possible pieces of evidence that Mike could be queer, all of his queer coding in season three. Thank you so much for watching this. If you have any thoughts on anything I said, please feel free to share them. And if you have any requests for any videos or anything you want me to talk about, please leave your requests in the request form below. And I love you all so very much. Thank you so much for all the support that I've been getting on all the videos. I'm so, so thankful. And um, I just love you all so very much. Remember to take care of yourselves and to take breaks and to be mindful of your mental health. Just be kind to yourself and be kind to others and just try to spread kindness. And yeah, I hope this was fun. <laughs> it was fun for me. So yeah, I love you all so very much. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.